Hi guys, today I'm continuing with my never ending story project series. If you haven't been following, I am working on a multi video series of my version of the never ending story. This is going to be multiple dioramas where I do different scenes from the story or the book. For my end project, I plan to put all my dioramas together and make what I'm calling a 3D graphic novel, kind of like a almost like a dollhouse, but more it's going to look more like a graphic novel in my head. <laughs> Today, I'm going to show you how I made Gluck Uck, otherwise known as Teeny Weeny and his racing snail. I worked on him and he was really fun to do. He was like probably the smallest character I've ever sculpted. And I really loved working in the smalls. All right, let's get started. All right, let's get our area ready to go. We need some tin foil. I have Super Sculpey clay. That's just a clay cutter and my pasta machine, which is good for flattening out clay. All right, here's my reference photo for my snail. I size approximately how big I want the snail to be for my future diorama. I want this snail to be more lifelike than the character version in the book. Just, just preference. I'm not trying to do exact replica of the movie or or the book or the cartoon. This is just my version of, of Gluckuck or Teeny Weeny. We're gonna call him Teeny Weeny or Gluck, I can't, I'm not gonna be able to say Gluckuck. I don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but something to that effect. We're gonna call him Teeny Weeny or this is actually the racing snail. Does he have a name? I don't even know. Um, but this is Gluckuck's racing snail I'm starting with. So as you can see, I curled up the clay to get the snail shape. And now I'm using different tools to give the snail its texture. This is, I'm just using, this is an old kid's paintbrush. You know, they're like cheapo paintbrushes. But they make really good, they're stiff. And they are really good for texturizing. I kind of love them. And of course... A best thing to texturize a snail is with using a shell. So I'm using a shell to give it a little bit more texture. So next we're going to work on the actual snail itself. So we did we did the snail shell and now or part of the snail snail part of the snail we did part of the snail sh wow tongue twister we did part of the snail shell and now we're going to work on the snail body. I'm using Super Sculpey Living Doll for the snail body. I love this clay because it's like very, the texture is very smooth. It's very similar to the base color of what I want to go with with this snail. I'm making the snail foot and using this little flat piece of clay I made with my pasta maker and smoothing it over the base. Here I'm making a tool that I want to use as a texturizing tool. So if you don't have the texturizing tool you want, make it yourself. I'm taking a wooden skewer and then I'm putting a little bit of clay in each side and putting some texture all over it and then I'm going to bake it and then I'll use it for in the future for my snail. Now I'm just sizing the area of where I want the snail's body to end or lay out, just using my little cutting tool to slice off little pieces I don't want. I'm gonna fill in the back side of the snail now. When I finish my future diorama, you're not gonna see this part, but I wanna finish it off anyways. I am just adding some tin foil to take up space and then I'm looking at this little teeny snail shell and seeing what kind of shape I want to make that back side of the snail. I guess it would it be the back side, the other side. It's not really the back of the snail. It's just the other side of the snail shell. All right now, so now I'm using my cool texturizing tool. And this snail, I wanted to have this like bumpy texture on its body that um, 
I thought would be cool using my little texturing skin tool to give it this l texture. It turned out really great. I'm really happy with how it came out. So now I'm using some cause clay. Cause clay is very flexible even after you bake it. This clay needed to be conditioned because it was super crumbly, but just some working it and it's all good. So I'm gonna make the uh, snail's tentacles or eyes with this cause clay. I'm using a clay extruder to get my little wormy doos and then I'm going to make some eyeballs out of that cosplay. It also is a really cool color because this cosplay is also translucent, so it gives a perfect tentacles or eyeballs to the snail. Very, very carefully adding on the teeniest of little eyeballs to the tops of these wormy doos. I am using clay adhesive to attach the eyeballs. This is basically like clay glue. <sighs> and now I'm adding his lower tentacles. I gave him a little bake time to save progress and now I'm going to work on the beginnings of the saddle area. Now I'm working on the armature for Teeny Weeny. I'm using this really thinned gauge wire and I'm just kind of twisting it into the size I want I didn't use, need to use thick gauge wire. I probably didn't need to use wire at all, but it helps me keep my shape, proportional shape. He's not really in proportion. He's like a Thumbelina. He's super small. I made a little base for him to hold on to why I was going to sculpt him, but I didn't end up using it, it at all. I just used the extra wire coming off his body. I'm working on his little coat here. In the movie, in the story, he is seems like a distinguished gentleman. So he wears some fancy clothes. So right now I'm working on his coat. Teeny Weenie needs a fancy tie, so we're going to add his fancy bow tie or ascot. Now I'm working on Teeny Weenie's head. Excuse the camera focus. This was the trickiest thing to try to get in and out of focus. If you have any tips, please comment below how to keep such a teeny little thing in focus while you're sculpting. Because it either wanted to focus on my hand or whatever was in the background. I gave him a little pre-bake, and now I'm going to work on his top hat. Time to add teeny weenies, teeny the little ears, and then I'm going to add his hair by using these little bitty bits of clay and then just kind of smushing them on using the bacon bond or the clay adhesive, that clay glue I was talking about, and attaching them to the back of his head and his little sideburn areas. Finishing up his sleeves of his coat and deciding how I want to place the arms. I didn't use the clay before because I wasn't sure and as long as you don't bake clay over the armature wire, you can still bend the armature wire. 
So I am uh, shaping everything into place, bending his feet into place, and then I'm going to finish up his coat and add his boots as well. and adding his hand here, and then I'll finish off the sleeve. Lastly, his coat needs some buttons, so I'm going to add those on with little bits of clay, and then he's going to be baked in the oven. Now I'm working on adding some details to the saddle area, adding some design elements to the chair, I'm using cos clay here for the stirrups, and I also added a little handle area as well. Time to paint. Ignore his eyes for a little bit. Eyes, I always struggle with eyes and his eyes change throughout the painting and in the final picture, you'll notice I add a little bit of color to his eyes as well. He's basically the color I want him to be, but it ha gives a little bit of a different texture. So I'm painting this peachy, creamy color to his face. I added a little pink color to his lips and I'm working on his eyes as well as his hair. In the movie, he wears this reddish or cranberry or maybe even mauve type suit. So I decided to go with that color scheme for him as well in my diorama. I actually found making him so much fun. I loved Working on such a small scale, I think as I continue to do this, I will even be better at it. This was my first attempt at this small of scale of a little person. He is kind of a caricature of a person, but that's okay with me. This is, he's not um, a human. He's a different type of character. So if he looks a little off or his nose is too big, I kind of like that. I think it gives him the character he needs. Keep a hairdryer handy when you're painting. It really speeds up the process, and especially on such a miniature scale because it took like two seconds to dry the paint. I'm painting his gloves black as well as his pants. I also paint his boots black, but then I'm going to add a little copper shine to his boots just to give the appearance that they're a different material. And then of course I painted his bow or his ascot, a little bit of like a yellowy gold color. And there he is, 95% done. I will work on his eyes a little bit behind the scenes. Next, I'm gonna paint the racing snail. I'm using a bunch of different techniques here, from dry brushing to washes, just to give a, the look I want in the end. There is not one color to his shell. His shell is multiple colors. So I'm adding a little bit of color to his eye area. I painted the saddle black and then put a silver overlay of the black because in the book he has a silver saddle. And then I'm just doing a variety of dry brush techniques over the shell just to give it that beautiful texture. I'm adding this little brown wash in areas to give it almost like a stripe 
to the shell. I also then added a little more dry brushing to his body part as well. And I'm so thrilled of how it came out. And here he is. This is my racing snail. And this is Teeny Weeny. He's so teeny, he's really hard to see. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please subscribe and ring that bell, and then you'll find out when the next project comes out. Next, I'm going to be making some of his other friends that he meets in the forest on his way to see the princess. Thanks for watching, guys. Check out the photos.